Let's so. let's talk about the game. Okay, well look, we Hello. have people here. Thank you for coming and watching us. I'm Lottie Bevan. <laughs> no, she's Lottie Bevan. <laughs> I'm Lottie. He's Alexis. Uh, we are the developers of Book of Hours, which you can see. Um, and hopefully you've played the demo of it. It's a game that is not a sequel to, but is set in the same universe as our previous game called The Simulator. Um, and we are going to take you through it. I mean, is it a sequel or is it not a sequel? That's a good question. Because I think we say it's not a sequel because you don't want people to think we'll have to play Cult of Simulator. Um, but it just happened to take place after it. Cult of Simulator was the 1920s. Yeah. And sort of 1926-ish in exile. And this is very definitely 1932. Yeah. Two years after is the... Is it 32? I think so, yes. I thought it was 36. 36, I'm sorry. Okay. He doesn't know his own First game. First I swear, now I know I'm going to say, 1936, seven years after the library fire, six years after the Plantagenet restoration. Love the Plantagenets. Mm. So this, let's start with, this is this is a substance called Lambig. Oh, Lambic yeah. is Etymology. the Breton equivalent of Calvados. As I'm sure all you fine people know, the three great brandies of France are... Calvados, which is made with apples, and Armagnac and Cognac, which are made from great spirits. And um, this game is set in Cornwall, um, which I think some Americans think is mythical, but I promise is, is <laughs> literally as real as Texas, although it's not damper than Texas. And it's real in the same sort of sense Texas is, really. And Brittany is just across the sea from Cornwall and shares an awful lot of culture. They're both Brythonic Celtic countries. They both had similar... Um, uh, Celtic languages which are now uh, fed into the local dialect and, and Lambig you might notice is not a very French sounding word because of course it's Breton so it's a Celtic language originally but do you know what the etymology of the word Lambig is Scotty Bellum? I don't Alexis tell me so uh, as you're probably aware um, Al at the beginning of a word generally suggests a or may suggest uh, an Arabic, Arabic root exactly because Christ. it's a definite article so Alambic in Arabic is a distilling flask the flask of distilling Alembic is an Arabic word. Alembic is from Alembic, like a lot of alchemical stuff. Ah. And how do you make spirits? You alemb it. You put them in a still. Uh, French, I think, for still is actually something like alembic. So lambic is from alembic. That's actually a good fact. There you go. I always come into these etymology conversations with a slight sense of dread. And rarely is that dread deserved, I have to say. Which means sometimes it is. Fair enough. Okay. Um... Do we need to click on anything on this screen? Well, if you want to play the game. We could... Who's these handsome folks? We need... Uh, uh, Adrian Degen is our Breton artist. Clockwork Cuckoo are our Bristolian we, icon artists. I feel artists. obligated as the art director of this game to say that this game is firstly very early on in development. We've got another five yes. months-ish of development before we release it. So the uh, credit Chilmark screen... is Siberian. ...will not look and like Marabeth this. Marabeth is Torrentino. Please is don't judge us. Um, the... Uh, you should just jump in and play. Yeah, so, okay, begin. Cheers. To this is actually hours. a slightly newer build than the one you have been playing. Just very, very slightly. So if you see differences, uh, don't panic. Did you mention it was a really early build, Lottie Bevan? I did. Yeah. Uh, there has been no librarian at Hush House since the fire, seven years now. March 7th, 1936, just as I said. Suitable candidates are very difficult to find, but perhaps you have found one in you. Take care in your journey. The seas around Brankrug are treacherous. So this we call apophenia and mise en scène, because if we give somebody a message like that, the assumption is it's a letter or something they got, if you show them a beach and say the seas around Brankrug are treacherous, then we don't need a cutscene uh, like the one at the beginning of the Karen Exiles DLC that shows the ship going down. That we also don't have the budget for. That we really don't have the budget for. <laughs> uh, and... Though I would say there will be... Uh, I, I would say better art and yes. more animations yes. and a more kind of polished effect in the final game. And the um, oh, I can't I can't point at the screen, can I? It's not useful. So okay. you'll notice there's a sort of white frame around it, which shows. I think, the I think they can see your cursor. Uh, ooh, maybe not. Hello. But you can. <laughs> uh, and uh, that's right. again, this is super placeholder stuff. Yeah. Um, Some people have commented in their feedback, for example, that like it's difficult to know what you can click on, and that's what the white. Uh, border is, is basically trying to tell you that this is an area that you can click on that has some sort of interaction. But of course, this is not what the area I got, border I, will actually I, look I got like. an email this morning with some feedback from a, a bloke saying, uh, and a lady saying, um, the UI looks unfinished. And he was very polite, you know, it was very pleasant. Yeah, so, UI yeah, is not is our unfinished. strength. I do like the art. UI is not our strength. We're going to be you getting do the code of the writing. I, I've, I've got a lot better than I used Neither to be. Neither one of us is a UI. And person. we'll be getting in a, um, some specialists to help polish, a specialist to help polish, probably. Um, uh, but also it's mostly just not very finished yeah um, I think I, I'm going to point out one thing about the shipwreck so you begin the game 
having come to Brand Krug to be librarian um, and having got shipwrecked and cast on the, up on the beach. I got like a couple of months into developing scam and I thought, what happened to the ship? Does anyone care? What happened to all those other people? Did they drown? I care. You cracked like yeah. an egg. Nobody's asked. Nobody seems... So it, it will probably become relevant later. But basically the ship was a delivery vehicle, like an egg, uh, which is thematically relevant. We'll come back to the egg. There have been lots of questions about there a certain been, egg later on in the demo. Yeah. Well, we are all eggs. The cold comes first. Thunder growling, waves pounding, and finally me, sprawled on the southern sand of the beach. There's something in my hand. Uh, Spool of the southern side of the beach, little iteration for you. This has been much Good. rewritten in this paragraph because it was literally the first bit of text of the game. And I think, it, it, uh, uh, like a lot of over-edited text, it's, it's not as it best, but it will be the time that we um, finish the game. So you can start with three things. You start with your health. It's currently half drowned. You'll notice it's counting down. That really stressed me out when I first played because if you have played Cultist, you will know that... It's quite a mean game, and when a card counts down, often cards have a tendency to disappear entirely, and you can't get them back. Yes. So, uh, a couple of things about that. Let me first pause the game. First of all, this is 2 minutes 57 seconds. Not many countdowns have killed us that long. Where you do have countdowns in Book of Hours, and there aren't many countdowns, they're nearly all in, in, in multiple minutes, so um, it's a little bit calmer. Secondly, you can pause, of course. But thirdly, when your health counts down to zero, it turns into health freezing. And it counts down again. And when your health counts down from freezing to zero, nothing happens. It's a <laughs> I trick. know. I did it because I spent so long when I was playing through this game properly rather than as a dev trying to like figure it out um, that I actually wasted enough time that my health like mm. decreased and I thought oh god I'm going to die immediately and it did not no and um, I, I I wanted to make a statement at the beginning um, that actually you, you, you don't die if you hang about There's there's, but I also wanted to inject some urgency because you have just been washed ashore on a beach um, but I wanted a little bit of narrative urgency and I wanted people not just to feel they could mosey around and they had an immediate goal which is to get indoors before they freeze to death but we don't actually make them freeze to death because this is a nice cultist it's, it's lovely cultist it's lovely cultist um, it wants to be friends. <laughs> was the other thing about that? Uh, I'm joking. Right, uh, let's collect. So, I want to explain the very exciting uh, fact that you can have objects rather than just cards in this game. Yes. It's revolutionary. This has been huge. So look at this. This rather attractive sort of pewter-coloured background. Yeah, with the um, asset that actually changes uh, proportion because we haven't fixed that code yeah. yet and it upsets me. Yeah, so we've got things in the world and we've got things that are intangibles and live in these trays down the bottom. You probably didn't know you could do that, did you? You can do that. Ooh. That's because um, the UI is not ready. No one knows. <laughs> yeah, but they, 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 they will work it out what they need to anyway. Yeah. Um, so, so some things live basically on the top of the screen in the overlay and are intangibles, your thoughts, your memories, money, because as you know, money is an intangible object that lives in your mind. Yep. Uh, anything that has a... Uh, Hashtag Bitcoin. Where it's going to be relevant uh, that it's in the world, uh, lives in the world. And initially... Initially, when I, I was doing the prototype, if you didn't, if you dropped a book in the world, it would end up like going to the world. And if you, you, if you would only open the beach, it would go and lie on the beach. And that was just really freaking confusing. Even I, uh, when I was playing through the beginning, would be like, where's the freaking book gone? Oh, it's, it's on the beach next to, next to the sea. Probably very tiny. So there's still an overflow effect, which I think isn't working great at the moment. If you end up with more than four things, they do get dropped in the world. But I wanted to allow people to, to carry things around them like a sort of basic inventory. Otherwise, your inventory is the whole world. So if you put your journal down somewhere, you need to remember where it is, which is ultimately the whole point of a library. It matters where a book is and you need to, um, to know where it is. So Brandon's Cove, the fishermen of Brankrug village beat their, beach their boats here each night. The sea does not regret the tide, and after the tide withdraws, something always remains, which we call memory, true of storms too. And that quotes from a letter um, that we released ages ago of somebody... Um, it's really sad. It... Uh, I mean, yeah, so, so this, this is the great tragic couple of the, um, uh, the Goddess of Minute backstory um, who, who came to differences and afterwards one or both regret their differences mm. and tried to change things, but um, uh, one or both of them moved on. And it is a genuine love between them, but they both really care about very different and, in fact, contradictory things. I mean, things. I don't think we can ever know what's in their heart, so I don't think we can say for certain it's genuine love. Uh, officially, it is genuine love. They're delightful. Uh, uh, Teresa and Christopher forever. Heart and head. Uh, 
but they, they do in fact and this started out as a, a, a continuity blip long ago um, but but they do have a um, further things happen uh, in the 1930s if you look all the way back to the uh, the very earliest letters there are letters from Teresa and Christopher after uh, the time that she apparently ascended to the manses but that's just one okay the p- other point about this plaque is I realised I'd, I'd given myself a whole bunch of information that I needed to stir very gently into the game, um, uh, like putting some spice into a stew. So this is Hush House. We've seen Hush House. It's the library at Hush House. And if there's one thing that people know about the backstory going, it's there's a library and it's called Hush House. But where's Bran Crook? Where's Bran Crook Village? What, who's this St. Brandon Bozo? And the answers, of course, are that Bran Crook is the island on which um, Hush House stands. Um, Brankrug Village is the village nearby, and Hush House used to be St. Brandon's Abbey. Now, I don't need to tell you all this right now. You'd instantly forget it if I did. So all I do is provide some scene setting and allow this, that when later on you come across a reference to St. Brandon's Abbey, it sounds familiar and it's easier to remember. And again, this, this, this went through more, more rewrites than you might expect. OK, we haven't started playing the game yet. <laughs> uh, yeah, really. I hope you're sitting comfortably, everyone. Uh, what can I do? Can I do something with my health? Uh, I'm soaked, I'm freezing. You have some health, don't lose it. Uh, storm memory. Right. So again, this is a lot friendlier than Cult is. Um, y- y- you do have um, to deal with some trial and error. And because the UI isn't finished, the, it doesn't give you as many clues as, as, as it should. Um, but uh, it does give you a bunch of information at the very beginning about what you should and shouldn't be doing. So, no. Uh, you know, yes, I've... <laughs> I am freezing. I can't do anything with my book. What I wanted to establish here is that your journal is really important. Mm. Two things about the journal. First of all, <laughs> it's got a shark. <laughs> it's because I reused Hastily an Asset from Exile. I'm uh, very cross about this shark. I love it's very cross about this shark because... <sighs> so, I, who knows if anyone else cares about this, but again, as the artist meant to be making this game look decent, ultimately, um, you'll notice that down here uh, in <laughs> the bottom of the situation window, as we call it, there's a bunch of icons that have a very simplistic style. So these are called aspect icons, and these all have essentially the same aspect ratio, the same style, which is, you know, uh, illustrative, simple black lines on a, on a single background. Whereas this shark, which I drew and I'm very proud of because he's very spooky and sharks are super scary, um, is a very different style. He looks more like this which is our element art style, which is much more complex. So if you put these two together, to me, it makes me want to gouge my eyes out with a spoon, but Alexis never notices it. And we haven't got any bug reports, which is either because it is so egregiously hideous that people think we know that it's a bug or no one else apart from me cares. People do care. The thing is, (laughs) uh, this this I got convinced of a a long time ago by a former colleague. It's he used to call it the racist uncle effect. That if you've got a party and there's sort of racist uncle sitting in the the, the side of the room going, epithet, epithet, slur, then even (laughs) if people don't sort of immediately come in and think, oh, this is a racist sort of party, uh, it generally brings the tone down. And so the the shark is our, our racist uncle. Oh! Oh, um, no, I feel bad for him. Well, no. We love shots. So the thing is, people, people build up this effect. So that's one of the things, ultimately, that makes people say the UI looks half finished. Yeah. Because it doesn't go. Yeah, yeah. Did you or Clockwork Sophie do this um, icon? Uh, Clockwork Cookie did. They are a, um, a two-person uh, artist freelancer. We work with the full studio that you're seeing here for Weather Factory. Um, but of course, we work with a bunch of very talented freelancers. And one of the uh, specialists we work with are artists who just do the element art. They, they specialise in this beautiful vector style. And we tend to give them like totally incomprehensible art direction. Like, um, you know, what does a crab smell like? Um, and then they go off and manage to make something that's really fantastic. It smells of crab. Brilliant. It smells of crab. This is why we don't get you to do the art. Uh, that and the fact that when I draw something, it looks like poo. F bomb and people. scatology. Uh, there are worse P bombs to draw. Uh, Look, read your lovely words. Okay. Yeah, all I wanted to say was, was I just really like this icon. I think it, it, it's, it's very vivid. It sort of cheers me up every time I look at it because it's so, so, so beautiful. I love it. There was good. a storm, it smashed the ship like an egg. But I seized this book as the sea seized me. Then the sea brought me here to Bran Krug. Now again, this has got a lot of <laughs> written and edited. I seize this because the sea sees me. It's a little bit Peter Piper Pector. I was going to say, Pepper don't Pepper say Pepper. that when you're drunk. No. Um, uh, but I wanted to have a sense of forward motion and I wanted to limit the amount of information, but I also wanted to have a bit of, 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 of drama in it. Now the journal is worth mentioning because I decided, in one of my more eccentric creative decisions will we'll come to why later, uh, that you'd have nine different possible origins and in each of your origins is a different journal um, and Dottie has lovingly illustrated nine different very beautiful journals 
But when I was just writing content with placeholder icons, I just thought, okay, when you first got your journal, it looks like a generic book. And then Dotty drew a bunch of books, some of which are silver, some of which are covered in feathers. And I, I said, can we have, also have a generic book that looks like it might turn out to be a book, uh, a silver book or a copper book or a book that's covered in feathers. And, oh, we can't really have one icon for those, can we? And like I said, it's okay, we'll put it in um, uh, oilskin wrappings. And I said, oh, thank God, what a good idea. And that also will get us around the slight hole I've written myself into that I need to maintain the plausibility of you having washed ashore with a book in your hand and the whole thing hasn't been completely illegible in the sea. Plink. We had dead air there. You can tell we're not professional streamers. Uh, I'm going to pause just out of nervousness, even though I know it's okay. Ah, yes. So this is a bit of a personality test. And this, I think, was something you responded to quite positively. Well, we've done sort of personality tests in the past. Um, one of the things that I worked on uh, last year was a tabletop RPG called The Lady Afterwards, which featured quite a big personality test of kind of multiple choice questions. So you didn't get stressed out if you were making a new character with the sort of blank page syndrome where you thought, oh, God, I have to be interesting and make up fun stuff about my character that's sort of uh, era appropriate, which I think stresses a lot of people out, but did give people lots of fun options that could uh, define their character in the game and people really resonated with it and loved it so we wanted to do something similar in book of hours and give you a simple um version of, of essentially a personality test so here you can choose between three different elements of the soul all of which are kind of different personality traits um we've got fet we've got core and we've got shapt do you want to describe them yeah so i think first of all it's worth saying that when lottie said we're very difficult in terms of providing art direction um saying to paul <laughs> clockwork cuckoo Please draw nine parts of the soul. They uh, were so good about it. They were so good about it. Um, so I, uh, some, some game design, some history, some etymology. Uh, the three things you come here for. Uh, <laughs> I'm alambic, but that's mine. <laughs> Enjoy browsing games on Steam. Um, <laughs> I mean, I think the people who were here, I hope the people who were here know, know what well, they're in that. for. They're Apparently going, there's 3,800 people here. Hi. Hi. Okay. Um, I'm sorry if, if if you thought this was going to be Fortnite or, or something. Do people still play Fortnite? Is that what the kids do? Oh my god! Do? You sound so old. Hello. Uh, right. Etymology. So, um, I in Cultist Simulator, if you played it, you know that you've got um, passion, reason, and health as your uh, three core abilities. Um, your, your, your things that live on the board that you do stuff with. To use the technical game design terminology. And that's a nice sort of triad for cultists because passion and reason feel opposed. You've got the whole intuition, moth thing, the whole lantern um, reason thing. And then if you're out of health, you die. You're, you're fragile, you're mortal. By the time I'd finished doing cultist DLC, I found it really limiting because some stuff isn't really passion, isn't really reason. And uh, we're more complicated than just intellect and intuition. Yeah. So I wanted to, to have a whole bunch of different stats. <laughs> Young, spinning in his grave. And the, um, uh, well, you'd be about time he'd work for a living. Uh, I wanted to, to have a whole bunch of different abilities that, that, that sort of reflect a different um, personal development. And to begin with, they were called things like, I don't know, fortitude and, and um, uh, uh, wisdom, probably, and um, uh, intuition. Um, but it, it's that's really subjective and really boring. So I hit upon this idea of making them the parts of the soul, and this is inspired, as a lot of you probably realise, by the Egyptian theory of the parts of the soul. Now it's really hard to generalise about that because the Egyptian religion and the associated conception of the soul covers literally three and a half thousand years of mostly unrecorded history. So I'm super generalising. And if there's any Egyptologists in the audience, which is possible around these parts, I apologise. Uh, but the Egyptian idea of the soul included the physical body as part of your soul. That's why they embalmed people. It included things like the car and bar, which are, uh, correspond arguably um, to things like the um, uh, uh, petit gozange and the uh, uh, grand gozange, I think, in um, like uh, voodoo. Um, and they included things like the ren, which is the, the true name. Um, and also the, the ab, I think, is the heart. So there's these very short, evocative um, names um, for an English perspective. But you made Fet, Shapt and Core and up. Visible. I made Fet, Shapt and Core up, but Fet, um, you heard it here first, is um, inspired by the English word uh, Fetch, which is from 
<laughs> Stop trying to make Fetch happen. I was going to make that joke. <laughs> Sorry, I'll let you do that next time. No, uh, whatever. So the idea of a spirit double that, that goes about the world um, or some sort of emanational sending from yourself. So I wanted something that, that uh, referenced that, but also sounds, I mean, Fetch sounds like it might be a, an Egyptian word, right? Yeah, I mean, Shapt is the one that particularly when I first saw these words was like, hang on, you've got this from Egypt. Shapt is very loosely references um, Shabti. Because the shabti are the little folks you get in your tomb, and the word means, or can be said to mean, something like opener. So this is the. Sorry, can we go back to the little folks you get in your tomb? Yeah. What? You what? get little. <laughs> so you're Egyptian, you're Egyptian um, uh, king, pharaoh, yep. or something like that. You need. Lovely. What are you going to do when you get to the afterlife? You're going to do your own laundry. Up. I'm going to have a party. Everyone's Who's going to clear up the party? Shots. My shabti. Uh, there you go. You way ahead of me. So you could, you know, if you're but certain, we don't certain bury cultures. people alive. These are like so we don't we don't, we don't really talk about um, like some of the sort of post Sumerian types who would would get all their servants killed in the tomb. Because I, I know I, that happens. I, I can't remember if they did that in Egypt yeah. or not. We don't do that in this game. But it's not cool. Uh, so you get little men's um, and ladies, and, and you, you get figurines. Them made figurines. And you okay, put them in the tomb that was the key probably, missing yeah. detail. Yes, they're like this is why hobbits, you keep getting no. arrested for murder because you say at the end of the confession, <laughs> no, no, little men's aren't real. I was playing no. Warhammer. Right, let's play okay. the game. So that's a shabby, and it's 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 speech. It's it's passage to and from the soul, and it's also um, <clears> your uh, your sort of openness to spiritual stuff. Um, which is why it's got our own. Oh no, it's fatigued. It hasn't got anything yet. And core is um, uh, the, the, the thunder skin element. Basically, it's your internal tenacity and rhythm and energy. And this took a lot of recasting to get right. It is core, not chore, because chore is. I mean, understandably, people, people keep saying chore already. Chore is obviously something you do in the kitchen. But core is in chorus, choral. As in chorus, um, uh, and also is in um, uh, like core. I think it's called core and corazon in Spanish, and all things that mean sort of heart and core and center. So you've got three of these things, and this also took quite a lot of um, recasting. Um, so when you can read it out, I, no, they can read it. Uh, so you notice the other two disappeared. Now, when I was playtesting with Lottie, the other two disappeared, and she went <laughs> uh, because she thought two parts of myself disappeared. So now, because we've now got another personality test, um, now when you put one of these in, it does actually tell you. Um, choose a strong wish, a past we sort of voice that has found fallen silent, the waves will wash away the others for now. Yeah. So first of all, we warn people, at least if they've read it, uh, and if they haven't read it, they probably don't care. We warn people that they're going to be, um, that health is stressing me, you know, so I'm going to pause, uh, <laughs> uh, that it's going to disappear, so you don't panic, hopefully. Uh, and secondly, we say for now, um, so you know, it's okay, this is not, if you don't choose metal now, um, you, you, you're screwed. Wist, um, I wanted to imply wistful, and it's also from the old English derived English word wist, as in I wist, I, 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 I believe, um, um, uh, I have heard that such a thing is true. Uh, so that's your, your memory stat, um, uh, your the closest thing to like reason in, in some ways. Metal, this was originally called character, because I like this to be, you know, that, that you, you've made mistakes and you've learned from them, you're a strong personality, that's a good thing and a bad thing, but you know who you are. And um, you do the same things when no one's watching that you do when everyone's watching. But having a stat called character mm. in a game is just too confusing. Mm. So metal it is. Um, and fost is one of the easiest etymologies. It's, it's, it's light. And obviously fost sounds like... Uh, uh, Phosphorescence. Phosphorescence and photon and fost and all that stuff. Uh, well, which one should I do, Lottie Bevan? Mm. Uh, uh, Ereb. I haven't Ereb. played through with Ereb yet. The fact that we can feed for D confuse people as well because uh, yes, I still it. find this. I, I'm yeah. not. Yeah, maybe there's, we'll, there's there's reasons, and I've spent ages doing designers' notes, so so I won't go into detail the reasons. But basically, the 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 sort the the different ways through the the process. Um, when I had it built, so that you chose um, one of, of of the active stats, two things happened. First of all, it was quite complicated to write a situation where you couldn't do an exploit and get to the village um, uh, without having gone through this process and um, uh, and two it felt like nothing happened it felt like when you made a choice you kept one and you threw away the others whereas this feels like you keep one and you gain something because it's promoted to being not, not fatigued anymore so don't throw away the others but we, we, might, we might revisit I might call them something other than fatigued um, but we are at some point going to actually play this game 
I wanted something I didn't have. I don't have very much tool now, do I? I suppose that should make it easier. Oh, I know this, this one. Okay. Um, first things first. I remember there's someone in the village who will give me sanctuary if I can get there. Mysteries to be noted to your journal. You can begin to investigate them when you and your journal are both dry. Okay, some signposting there. When you and your journal are both dry. Don't try to read the journal. Ooh, I want to read the journal. Can I glean anything for this book? I felt I ought to allow people to try. No, no you don't. No, you can't. I've dried it out. Carefully. You can't just sit on the beach I think and also because you're, you're playing this through having actually made it. People who haven't seen this game ever before might notice that we're not taking any interest in the actual environment. So maybe you want to zoom out and oh, yes. around. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> Where no, am I? <laughs> I'm on a beach. Not art and so much so as, as the actual game. So we'll see, you know, there's lots of... We can see it's at Ooh. night. Ooh. We can see some beautiful parallax effects. There's definitely going to be totally flawless when we launch. Uh, and we can see that up there is some sort of misty suggestion of civilization because there's lights, there's some telegraph poles, which uh, will tell you that it's not super kind of medieval. We didn't want people mm -hmm. to think they were going to wander into some sort of um, Monty Python sketch. Uh, but right now, none of this is available to you because it's so misty and because you are essentially half drowned, freezing to death on a beach. Uh, and I think it's worth talking briefly about the art style, which is is we wanted something that Wes Anderson was the starting point. Um, we wanted something that that looked like a board game or a doll's house um, or an illustration of a children's book, without looking primitive or naive or stupid, but that lent into being quite low res and characterful rather than sort of super realistic. So one of course, the fog, yeah, Bankrook Village. Let's come back to that. Let's Go get on. there with our old friend's address. Uh, so we've we got the two things you can do until you get further into the game are consider and talk. Which you just unlocked. Oh, so the reason memory fear happens is, is, is another game design thing. Um, originally, your, your talk verb appeared when you unlocked it. And then you got a message and you click collect. And there's nothing to collect. Or you click like continue, which is a bit of a boring action. So I want to, you can't do much with your memory fear. You can, in, in theory, do something with it if you keep it around long enough and, and act quickly. But I wanted to do something slightly characterful. And I wanted to do... Um, <laughs> dear old HP uh, what is something like slightly characterful uh, and say you know be worried keep going you actually get a slightly different uh, text there you know depending on day or night oh really yeah, you do. what does the uh, I can't day remember say. The, the wind burps <laughs> uh, right so here we are on the beach we still need to get on the, the damn beach the seaweed's great but ultimately you can't make tea out of it um, and now this is the point which people often start struggling in the, in, in the demo because you can't do anything. You can't do anything more with, with these. What it will tell you is uh, I can't put that there. Yeah. Um, talk. You can't do anything with this. Uh, you can't do anything with this. You can do something with this. You get a subtle glowy effect to tell you that. You also get a subtle glowy effect if this is closed. But it's subtle. Um, and we'll make you it can't clearer. in this build drop it on. Oh, you can! Oh, it works. Oh, fine. <laughs> oh, okay. but you've ruined the text. Any. So that didn't happen. Sorry. Okay, yeah. nobody saw that. Yeah. That was fine. Uh, text mesh pro and scaling changes. You have to, to call uh, uh, force mesh update. Never mind. Um, so this is your fetch. This is your fetch. This is your connection to the, the other world. Walks in dreams. Rose. Uh, now contending with moth for my favourite um, aspect. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Which people who know me a very, very long time will recognise this, this phrase. Um, but... Uh, oh, another thing. Well, these used to be called abilities, and I kept saying, "Oh, Lottie, you need to put your ability in the slot." And she'd say, "Which what? what? I mean, like a skill?" Yeah. Uh, and in the end, I called them elements of the soul because nobody knows what abilities are. They call them stats. I like elements of the soul. And it's great, but it's very hard to put in a sentence. You can use what you've got elements of the soul card here. Mm. So anyway, um, so if we had um, core or shaft, we could do something slightly different. But we had the dream. So what's this? There is a fisherman on the beach. You're playing at double speed and health is really upsetting Ooh, me. Okay, there we go. Uh, let's pause. So the fisherman, um, one of the other things, Lottie, you said, I think, was, was yeah. you were surprised at the effect of having the... Um, he's got no mouth. Do you think it's like a busk? He does have a mouth. It's like, it's, it's, there's this... Ugh. He's a lovely gentleman. He's a bit sus of you, frankly, because look at the state you're in. Hmm. But he's come down here. He's left his, his kippers. He's left his warm hearth. And he's come down these steps... To, to come and find you. So how are you going to convince him that you're not um, a squid monster, an evil and mermaid, reluctant. or just a common murderer? <laughs> how? Uh, so, um, 
Also, he does it quite a lot like Captain Haddock. He does. Him, and but we're that's, not sorry. But that's ideal. Um, that's who I would want to be rescued by. Uh, blistering barnacles. <laughs> right, so... Um, uh, I'm, I'm glad of the fact that when, when you when you see a face, suddenly you're like, oh my god, people, that's nice. Yeah. Um, and a couple of game design notes again. One of the things I realised very is is you see a face, then you want to talk to it. Yeah. This, the old friend's address. Oh, we should read that in a minute. But but this is the introduction to um, to the person in in Brand Crew that you've come to see. Um. Uh, is. Um, uh, buh, 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 uh, 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 the person you come to see used to have Mrs. Kill's face on it because obviously but I realised when you put Mrs. Kill's face on the introduction you keep trying to talk to it and you can't, <coughs> can't talk to it so I took the face off this bloke of course you want to talk to now ultimately what you need to do is you need to put this bloke in the guidance slot take you up on the cliffs and in the very first um, pass you just put him straight in the slot bish bosh up you went you can't do that right now because and this again early UI it wants somebody with Sky, he's got. It wants somebody with assistance, he's got. But it wants somebody without... Scepticism. Scepticism. So, um, when people see a face, they want to talk to it very often. <laughs> I also just, sorry, just, I just love the idea that in Cornwall, where we have taken many inspirations from for this area, this Brown Krug area, the first thing that somebody feels when they find a half-drowned human on a beach in the middle of a misty night is not like, I must help that person, but who are they and are they going to kick me in the shins? Well, you know, you're like... That's a healthy tap, British response there. He didn't there. tap you on the head with a rock. You know, this is still the... No, that's true. He didn't call yeah. the whatever the gendarme is in Cornwall. <laughs> the, the local Bobby. <laughs> uh, I mean, you could be French. <gasps> uh, An invasion. Right, sorry, I'll stop distracting you. Okay, speak so, to the fisherman. So speak to the fisherman. So the things people wanted to speak to him, so I needed to provide a reason for people to speak to him. And initially I just put basically some sort of flavour in there. Sorry, you need to do the voice. Come no closer. What's not your business? The Thank reason you. everybody thinks Thank that you. pirates sound Cornish is because there was a, a Cornish actor in an early Hollywood film about pirates, but that, that stuck. So um, originally I just had a sort of a hint when you put him in, in the thing to say, put me in the slot over there, but that looked like you'd done something wrong. So I thought, well, we need something to do with him so that he, he's ready to be put in the slot over there, because otherwise it's a miscue. What's thy business? Um, it's worse that I worried about thy making mm. people think we were back in the Middle Ages. Or just very um, bad writers. Or just very bad writers. But it's, um, uh, Sorry, be, someone, be someone that will speak for me. Lovely. Uh, West Country dialect, of which Cornish is an extreme example, um, has a whole bunch of, of, of leftover features, which I hope come across as characterful rather than bewildering or medieval later. And I think a lot of actual Cornish people speaking this will take issue with my interpretation of Cornish dialect. But I'll get a sense. We're to trying our that. best. Uh, of course, since 1930, the restoration, the locals have grown ever more suspicious of foreigners. Do you think that might be something that's relevant later in the game, Lottie Bell? No, irrelevant. You can discard that totally. Don't Fine. worry about that. But there is somebody in Brankrug I know. Okay. So, as a result of chose, choosing the, the um, that is the cell we chose, we got an origin who starts out knowing you know, Mrs. Kill. Mrs. Kill is a handywoman, the midwife of Brankrug Village. Handywoman is, is this lovely term that mm. Lottie dug up that actually means specifically midwife as well as uh, crafty person. Well, but it means lots of things. So, so, so again, the game is set in the 30s. And obviously, if you say handywoman these days, you think you mean a specifically female person who comes around and puts up some shelves, mm. which is fine. Um, but in the 30s, it was a specific term that basically meant a sort of rural, kind of useful woman who was specifically some sort of midwife. So she, she specifically dealt with babies and birth. But she also... Um, I think, helped with burials. Um, mm. And she was also just sort of really practical. So so a sort of really competent nurse who also could put up shelves, basically. So Branco Village, the four people you start dealing with are really freaking primal. And I've seen people start to... I mean, they're not. They're, they're actually <laughs> they're uh, werewolves. humans. <laughs> they're not werewolves. Uh, they're not. You heard it here first, um, long. Um, but they are, uh, you know... Uh, We've got birth, we've got death, uh, we've got the forge, and we've got um, knowledge in the sun. And the forge, for people who've never heard of anything that we've made before, is the, the fires that burn, the creation, the destruction. But also more generally, we've got birth, we've got death, we've got the sort of the, the, the craftsman, and we've got the, the God. priest. Uh, God. And so, we've got so a got, pub. You know, and we've got a pub, there you go. Everything human that is. Mrs. Kill is the handy woman in the midnight of Banker Village. I knew her long ago in Paris when her surname was not Kill but Ravelin, and her sister was a Viscountess. Her home is always open to me, though she's asked me not to bring up the title thing when Mr. Kills around. <laughs> I can find shelter for tonight under their roof. 
Once I've reached Brankerick Village, <laughs> I actually put this in bold just to make sure that people didn't get stuck too much. I don't think it'll make any difference, but, but there you go. The title thing, Mr. Kill and Mrs. Kill both have secrets from each other. And we had to, we, we got into quite a discussion about secrets that didn't feel nasty or furtive or mean. Yeah. And also didn't lean too hard into stereotypes. So at one point, Mrs. Kill was going to be on the stage and that just seemed like, yeah. We should say at this stage that we're married, so we have quite yes. strong opinions about keeping things from your about Lottie being spell. on stage yeah my, my atrocious history in the theatre okay I'll take you by the cliffs then the gentleman is no longer sceptical we'll probably we get do. some new eye to actually show aspects coming and going more clearly we will we he's will. still reluctant and the reason he's still reluctant as people who paid the, very, uh, the bills very early will know is that if he wasn't reluctant I could put him in here and start doing various other things which we don't want do what don't want um, <laughs> as it is now, because he's got <laughs> reluctant, it's like ah. The gentleman no doubt understands, wishes to understand that you. I'm going to start saying that when you ask me now. for things. Ah, yeah, like I stepped on a seagull. Yarp. Um, Yarp. No. Right. Okay, right. Let's get up the cliffs. Okay, so we've Again, made some what I really should us. be able to do is drag this bloke on here and, and do something with it. But now you've got this placeholder thing, sanctuary in the storm. Hitting our themes early, because obviously, you know, it's all about shelter and peace and solitude and sanctuary. Um, I need help to climb the cliffs in the dark, and the local suspicion of outside is more than ever since the new restoration and the new king. It's Tell weird. me more about the new king. It's weird that he's capitalised, but he's totally irrelevant to everything. Don't no worry about that either, that's no not relevant. relevant. Just out of your mind. <gasps> A new village room. appears. A clue there. Don't look at the little square next to the post office, that yeah. doesn't matter. That's going to go away. It's, a bit, it's weird, why are those things round? What? <laughs> Those wheels, they're not round. Ugh. Oh, okay. We've got a slight aspect ratio issue with the speed. When he says we, he means he, as the coder, has totally failed me difficult. as the artist, and he takes everything I do and makes it ugly. That's his job in this game. That's apparently. what men do with women's work. Oh. How sad. How sad. Right, um, so we got the smithy, but we can't go there. Denzel the smith is not for us. We've got the post office. But we can't go there yet. Oh, can we put that in there? No, not yet. I can't put that there. We've got the rectory. Reverend Timothy, possibly my favourite. Look at his lovely I, face. I love the art. You did the art, though. I did you? do the art. He's really good. So Reverend Timothy won't shut up. He does look quite like he's had a very big night out and now he's quite hungover. I mean, I think he probably sort of occasionally dips into the communion wine when he's... he's <laughs> and Terence brings him a cup of tea in his accident. He's like, oh, it's very, very Whoops. good. Very good. Thank you, Terence. Drop the brandy in oh, again. Yes, no, no. Um, Fair. Um, the sweet bones... After the restoration of 1930, shut about the new king already. He's not important. Why do you keep writing about him? Uh, and Mrs. Kill, midwife. Ah, now we've heard of them. We have. <laughs> uh, the Kills, two things about the Kills. First of all, uh, actual history. Um, I did some I research on on, um, uh, on Cornish village trades, which is how we came up with, with midwives and carpenters and things. Yep. And often the carpenter was a, a coffin maker or an undertaker. Uh and I found actually a couple called Mr. and Mrs. Kill, um, where he was the uh, coffin maker um, in the 1930s in Cornwall. A real on, Mr. On Kill? Some, yes. Uh, somebody done a, a local history project. Spelled like this? Spelt like this. That's magical. So I was worried people think you were two on the nose, but you know. No, I love right. it. Have a storm. Um, this is, uh, you can actually come in without putting your health in there. Um, for reasons that are much too complicated to explain, you can still rescue your health later. It's confused so many people, I'll probably just make you put the health in. Um, here we are. Okay. Thank goodness. We this found a killed. friend. We found a half. Do you want ah. to talk about the teddy bear? <laughs> so the teddy bear. So the kills have been quite an artistic problem because they share the same location in game, um, but they have uh, two quite... Uh, different aspects and different approaches so if anyone's plays cultists they will know that winter is the aspect of ending of silence or often of death and grail which is the red aspect of mrs kill is the Not aspect finished, yeah. of uh you know birth rebirth the grail um quite bodily appetites but also sort of sort of creative ancient urges um which seems suitable for somebody who deals with with birth and also helps with death but those two are very opposed, so I had to come up with an icon that worked with both of them. So I ended up working, uh, designing an icon that you can see in the top left-hand corner there of a teddy bear with um, sort of 
dead eyes um, that could be mistaken for buttons, that could be mistaken for the kind of um, traditional way of identifying that a cartoon is dead rather than alive, the crosses. Um, and we have two versions, one of winter coloured and one is grail coloured, that we have not quite yet decided the rules about. Yeah, the problem is that generally you're talking to both the kills. So because I drew lovely yeah. pictures like the rector of uh, Mr and Mrs Kill separately, so when you speak to individuals, you actually will get their faces, so you can actually see you know, a male face to represent Mr Kill and a lady face to represent Mrs Kill. But... Um, we are not quite decided on how they're going to be represented together as a union because I tried I do, to morph them but together. But I do like this, Lottie Bevan. This this effect. It's very yeah. much in the where that Beth Anderson vibe. Well, and this uh, against this is just great. The BTs <laughs> on one side. Oh. See, he says this now. When I first did it, he was like, why would they hang their swords outside? But, sorry, their swords outside their, their windows. That's a stupid decision. I get a bit over-literal sometimes. I also get over-literal by pointing out what's going on with the... Um, he also didn't call me stupid, ...with the telegraph be poles clear. because they, one place they don't go in the... Oh. I will fight for the telegraph poles. But why do they go to the post office, which actually has the telephone in? Don't ask me difficult questions. They look nice. Everything will be okay. Okay. Take shelter with the kills. Take shelter with the kills. Mrs. K and I said, talk, late talking about old times, the Latin quarter. Did I mention that she's from Paris and her um, sisters of Vicontes? Um, the Ravelines. Has anyone heard of the Ravelines? Don't mention them in front of Mr. Kill. Uh, Mr. K listens to King's pipe. Wine and roses, he observes. <laughs> Suppose the wine is all spilt now, but the roses will come up again, won't them? I like that as a life philosophy. Well, it's homespun, my dear. Won't them? It's an authentic Cornish thing. I think we're going to be sued by Cornwall for this game. I think we should get some money for developing tourism. Uh, I'll get on that. Uh, I did actually look very briefly into it. Basically, you have to live in Cornwall, obviously. Mm. That's fair. <laughs> okay, Misfits and Exiles. We love them. Uh, oh, but yeah, just on pass on, uh, consider and talk. You know, for a long time I thought you shouldn't really be able to consider and talk because I want to have a decision between reading something and people talking to you. You can't, if people, you're talking to people, you can't be reading a book. That's just, just mean. Mm. Anyway, you can put the book down a bit and talk to them. You I'm can't. not dropping hints. Stop it. Anyway, so yeah. And again, this is, this is a kind game. It's not like cultists. You don't have to make game. constant difficult decisions about how to spend your time oh, I love this one um, oh music I should talk about the music uh, Marabeth the composer um, half of the compositional elite squad along with Ben Bartman um, said she might or not might not be in the stream but Marabeth is a, a, a shy forest creature and I don't know if she's actually here hello <laughs> if you are Marabeth she is the um, closest person I've ever sort of met to an elf yeah she's a sort of elemental who lives in Canada and produces beautiful music so this this is this is lovely which one is this I can't the name a postcard to Bran I thought it was. Possibly. Yeah. Although we haven't actually, I think I might have just angered her because I don't think we've signed off the I said I said it to her and basically said as long as we don't have anything about your mouthful of earth this time, it's fine. Okay, fine. Yeah. fine. Um, so let me talk about seasons and music. You might notice it's subtly got to be day um, where, where we were. Well, you've paused it though. I have paused it. Um, but it was night when he came in and it's day now. It is. And some of the mist has lifted a bit. And, and, and again, the sky from, from the art department will look better in the final yes, version. Again, it's super <laughs> so this is moving very slowly. This is moving even more slowly. We've got spring. Um, That's a uh, lovely description. Which shows winter, because placeholders. <laughs> uh, and we've got dawn, which looks squishy because placeholders. You I love this I mean? quote. This, this quote I found in the introduction to a rather charming uh, novel called Taste the Morning uh, by Michael Scott Rohan, uh, Dead These Ten Years and More. Um, which you might want to pick up at some point. Is he a poet? Like his effort. No, he was, although bless you for saying it, he was a um, uh, fantasy and science fiction author. Really liked him. Always used to pick out for his work when I went into bookshops. Um, and, yeah, he's dead, but that's what happens. But books, the memory that do not die. Sunrise. Okay, this is... This is <laughs> Don't look at that. Uh, <laughs> but the point is, all of... Um, in cultist, time was your enemy. Mm. In... A book of hours, time is your friend. I like that. I wish I'd come up with that earlier. We should have put it on the Steam page, but it's really true. So every day is a cycle, and uh, uh, but basically it's okay if you miss time. You get time-limited stuff. Um, in 1.1 seconds, I believe, your memories mm. will disappear because they're time-limited, but also your abilities will refresh. That's the and thing, can, at dawn you'll lose your memories because you wake up to a new day, but you will refresh the uh, abilities and skills that you've used, right? Yes. So it's sort of a new day, new opportunities, rather than, oh God, I missed an opportunity last night to do X. Exactly, exactly. And the seasons, likewise, different things are available at different seasons, um, uh, and the world looks different, or will. And also, we got Marabeth to do, I think, three pieces of music for each season day, and another two for each season and night. So you'll get it... Um, 
uh, you get the, the all the background changing as well. And we've yeah, we been debating how much how much um, uh, silence to put in between the uh, between the tracks. You don't get get so you don't appreciate them. I actually just before this um, we, we put the demo live. Marabeth sent out uh, over some remastered um, audio files. Or Brent rather sent over some remastered audio files. Uh, high fidelity. Um, Why are you zooming on the bit the, where the s- shells are on the? Oh yeah. Don't look at that. Don't look at that. Uh, <laughs> that didn't happen. Uh, <laughs> But the, Zoom in on I the chose that the there's, game. there's a track that plays when you when you when you come into the game that I want, I, I picked out of the one she sent to evoke a sense of hope and and, and slight fear given you just been shipwrecked um, and when I listened to the remastered files there was a lot more going on in there so I actually changed it mm. because it was a bit distracting with the subtle um, waves audio that you also get and I mailed Marabeth and said oh there's a lot more going on these I see I can see why you sent them over and she said no it's the same it's the same music we just cleaned it up so you can hear it more so who knew. Different audio formats he really do our make a difference. professional composer yes. was, was, knew what she was talking about. Okay. Um, well, uh, actually, I, was, I think I was wrong because when I said it's going to refresh in a moment, because uh, I changed the way, the, the way things worked at the beginning so that you get a bit more time before your memories disappear at the beginning of the game. This is very stressful. Kind of well, that's the gift. This cult is going to be dead. Night's fall and dawn will come soon. And look, it's getting dark. And there you are. Everything's so fresh. So you can do that in Book of Hours, right? If, if I did that in Cultist, um, I'd have dread coming out of my arse and into my ears by now. Alexis. And there are Americans there, but, here. Oh, yes. Okay. You know, I did a GC talk once and somebody did a review saying it was really good, but there's too much profanity. So it was very it. rude. Look, it's yeah. dusk. Let's go to the pub. Fine. Right. So what can I do? Um, I can now. Oh, yeah. No, we need to get te- our book. Yeah. Right. Uh, so this is a really key thing. Everything you need to do in the game, you basically need to use one of your style elements for, and that will fatigue it, and that limits what you can do each day. But you can fast forward, so it's all great. The birth always leaves marks. So someone misses kills um, uh, sayings are phrase. authentic form rules, uh, Cornish call, call, call proverbs. I really like, you can't get feathers off a toad. <laughs> <laughs> there it is and couldn't be tizzer. That's my favourite Cornish phrase. Uh, <laughs> They're not wrong. Crazy than Reverend Cowardly's pig. <laughs> uh, but uh, that's not authentic. So there we go. Ooh, What's what it? is this magical thing that we've ruined the aspect I saw somebody of. respond really positively to this art. They well, said they if it wasn't seen. stretched horribly, oh, I, didn't, literally didn't even notice I too anyway. would respond positively. Here we go. Silken book. The binding is unusual and half familiar. Some kind of silk. It's survived its soaking remarkably well. So this is a, my journal the core thing that I don't want to lose. You can lose it if you put it in the wrong shelf. And it's worth saying that depending on the choices you made on the beach mm. with your elements of the soul, the ones that you chose over others, you will end up with a different journal because it reflects your character and essentially your personality test earlier on in the game. And this will be important when we go into the wisdom tree. Do you want to show that now? Because we haven't shown that I will, all. momentarily. I was going to say, th- th- these things, um, it's a thing... I love this quote. Um, I put a Lao Tzu quote in um, Original Cultist. Long before we knew it was going to be translated into Chinese, I wonder, I assume it's easy to translate back into Chinese. There's a Zun Zi quote in this. Um, and I wanted Lottie Bevan to find a less gendered version of gentleman, um, but I've actually gone to a Chinese scholar to confirm what the best translation would be that keeps some of the sense of the original. Have you? For there. Yes. Huh. Yeah. Um, well, thank you. Okay, so On the art is into grail and into rose as a result of the steps he chose. What does rose represent? Uh, Rose is, is um, some, it, in some respects, it's secret histories because there's no secret histories aspect in this game for reasons that um, I will talk about at some point. Uh, it is horizons, it is travel, it is realization. Um, it's got a lot in common with moth, but it's more airy to Earth's uh, mothiness. Uh, it's riddles, it's poetry, exploration, enlightenment, hope. Uh, at the Compass Rose. And. Um, book, yeah. What are we going to do with the book? We're going to read it, and this time it will tell us my, my journal. An amnesiac in an RPG? How bold! I wonder why nobody has ever thought of this approach before. Because by having an amnesiac protagonist in an RPG, their lack of knowledge of the world and the player's knowledge of the world are united. Brilliant. You see, you're thinking that. I'm just thinking now the book is stretched sideways. <laughs> If you're going to ruin my art, please ruin it in the same way. It was, uh, I mean, that's a great in playing to torment the great now, that's what I'm saying. I'm sorry. I'll ruin you're your art. You're not sorry at all. Uh, in, in only the ways you asked me to ruin Zero your art. Zero regret. I really am regretful, but it's very, code is very difficult. 
uh, some kind of silk. Uh, <laughs> yes, I remember the, the uh, artistic um, direction for this. I was like, you can draw B silk, can't you? Yeah. There's a what? reason it's B silk, which ties into a genuinely tied to the law and all the rest of it, which will fire a hundred speculations. Uh, well, just on the art now, because he's now it's stretched that art. Oh, this is so painful. Right. Anyway, this the top right is how it should look. And this is um, not actually what it... How have you made it B-Silk? I thought you had to upgrade it to be B-Silk. Uh, no, this is B-Silk once you read it. So the reason that I, we, we make... Because it's changed. We make you draw it. So so a little bit of uh, game design uh, before I, I, I let you complain about your art again. <laughs> and I uh, will. Pictures. Uh, <sighs> I didn't want you to people to tell to, to give people the results of the personality test on the beach. Yeah. Because I didn't want them to say, "Oh, I wonder what happened if I'd done the other one and go back and try the other one straight yeah. away." I wanted them to feel a bit committed and interested. It's fine, obviously, people to experiment with different things, but you know what it's like when you kind of want to reload and try something different. Yeah. So first of all, that um, I wanted it to be a bit of a payoff further down the line. So that's why you have to dry it. And the reason you have to dry it and then consider it is because that's basically what you need to do with new books. So I wanted to teach people early that when you get a book, the first thing you do is you pop it in your consider yeah. uh, verb. Um, my journal, I'm sure, I wrote the storm scattered my thoughts, but each turn, page turns familiar. I began to recall why now I came here for art. Better yet, for art. A really, really big art. We're allowed to make fun of artists because we're both artists. I think the artist is actually my favourite um, origin. But, Picasso? But, but, I'll give you Picasso. <laughs> I'll give you Picasso. No Pass else, me more Lambie. No one else has Where's noticed. my absinthe? Oh my gosh. I'm sorry, go on. No one else has noticed this, but this uh, journal has actually changed in terms of how it looks. Um, the original featured, this is so nerdy, um, an original print by um, Aubrey Beardsley, who was a, a, a famous artist of the time of Oscar Wilde, um, very gothic, uh, turn of the century fan of circular stuff and, it, and he did lots of kind of uh, a very creepy kind of arboreal woody stuff which is very important for, for our law um, but now that we have read it um, the pattern has subtly changed possibly too subtly and art might need to get over itself and do something more obvious um, but now it features a different kind of tree which is one of the um, wisdoms so I do do you think we should go to the wisdom tree now just to show that that is a we were, uh, one more thing I just want to, to make people enjoy my writing first um, but I think honestly um, it's not too subtle. I think that people, if people don't notice it uh, until they've played it for three hours, then there'll be something nice they'll come across that makes Well, they'll see, smart. right, this aspect, which is the artist's uh, wisdom tree, represents the Bosque, which we'll come on to in a minute, um, is clearly shown in the art, hopefully. So, hopefully people will notice when we do the voices? Icon. Dana was a start, the Surrealist Manifesto, a step along the road, but only a step. What's that voice? The road goes nowhere unless it goes into the wood, and that's the road we can only walk in the dark. Furious Wait, walrus. no, not in the dark. In blood. Hip deep in blood. Sorry, oh, shut up. Give it to me. I'll write it. Were you inspired by Garth Marenghi? So I can't... I didn't want to do a French accent because it's come across any sort of vaguely racist. Oh, yeah. Um, we can't do that. Uh, but obviously, you know, posh Brits are, are, are people. Um, and uh, a lot of the inspiration for this, in seriousness, was um, uh, the, the Dardists and the Surrealists. Um, the Dardists, I believe... I did the manifesto and immediately sort of separated two camps and had bun fights and argued with each other. Uh, <laughs> You've like got to love the Dardais. The wisdom's tree. <gasps> a totally different scene appears. Scholars and addicts recognise nine wisdoms, though they disagree where one wisdom ends and another begins. Something for me to think about. Use cursor keys to traverse the tree. I think almost 25% of the feedback I've got is, <laughs> can we not please use cursor keys to traverse the tree? I would also let everyone watching this to know that I also said we shouldn't use cursor yeah. keys to traverse the wisdom tree. And I said, Here's as I will say now... Uh, later there's reasons why it's fiddly to, to, to do a drag um, and there's reasons why it's fiddly to do the zoom the biggest reason is because I'm going to put cards in these slots in a bit but firstly and I if you zoom the cards would change the slots would change size um, and of course you can have them change size heavily for the rest of the map but it's just a bit more work so you will be able to pan with a mouse you will be able to zoom in and out up to a point go on. So the key uh, basic point of the wisdom tree is that it is our version essentially of a skill tree. Um, each of these um, lines radiating from the center you see has the same repeated icon, but, uh, but different for each line. And each one of these represents a different one of the nine wisdoms. So these are arcane arts that you can specialize in. Um, so it's sort of like in a traditional RPG, specializing in you know fire magic over uh, archery or something. Um, and in Book of Hours, you don't have to totally commit to one line. You can you can sort of dabble. Um, but based on your choices earlier on in the game, you will be better suited to um, learn different types of uh, different types of wisdoms. Uh, other, ugh, what? 
Ladies and gentlemen, he's sorry. gone right to the end of the arc I'm sorry. where it doesn't yeah. look very good because it's not finished. If you pan left, you'll be able to see the uh, censored bit. Oh, yes. What is this? What is this? The Suppression Bureau, Alisi Silichet, Tibe Non Alichet. What does that mean? I believe Lottie Bevan. Um, oh, God damn it. I can always remember the original play it's from, which got me loads of culture points. No. I had time to Google it. But you fluffed um, it. But yeah, it's, 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 it's a Roman quote. It's not fucking... Seven and a half thousand people have watched you fluffed it. Yeah, I... I, I uh, I'm delighted. Uh, I did very badly at Latin GCSE. Uh, and uh, but it translates as hi Matt if you're watching sorry um, and it translates as it is permitted for us it is not permitted for you the suppressing bureau is um, kind of beloved but but they are not friends of uh, people in cultist simulator certainly they're the sort of organisation that basically thinks that you shouldn't mess with the occult because it messes you up and like they're not wrong but they are a bit authoritarian they are a bit keen to experiment themselves and to stop you being able to do it because you're not part of their club um, and here we see they have censored a part I mean, of more than that, it's, it's, not, it's not you're not part of their club. They, they, it's, it's very much the sort of witch findery thing of, okay, we might dabble a little bit. We're really not going to dabble. We're just going to stop people summoning percussigants and, and putting them up Pope's bottoms because it just causes trouble. And they, to complicate things, the Special Bureau's immediate predecessor, the Nocturnal Branch, um, uh, were the ones who built the prison on the back end of Hush House uh, around the turn of the century. Uh, this is quite an early version of the wisdom tree. It will look prettier. You'll get glowy in your mouse over it. It'll make more sense. So many glowies. But it's functional. Lottie does like her glowies. Anything you... else you want to say about it, my darling? Uh, not at this stage. I mean, there's some um, dotted lines between things. Um, these are not final. But what this means is that we want to make um, some interesting connections between different wisdom trees. So, for example, um, choose a random wisdom tree. Click on click on any of the icons. Okay. Scholocostrophe. The study of things that should not be studied. Possibly the scariest of the wisdoms to specialise in and therefore probably the most popular. Um... That would connect once you've got up to level two. I've just pointed let's at the screen. Show the, let's, show, no, let, let's show them when you get to that point. Well, I was just going to say that the blotted line to explain what people are looking at. But I can show them that in a minute. Okay, we're not yeah. going to do that. We're going to do something different. Here we go. Okay, so we're this, professionals. You, you got a thing. You put the thing in. It says plus tryst because when you click a sign, you what? get a new card. Another part of the soul. The change and the login. Moth and moon. Not always why to listen. Do you notice, by the way, this is the wild and powerless principle of chaos and yearning. This is the nocturnal, the forgotten. We're not committing to whether or not moon is or is not a principle. Now tell me why you emphasise that verb commit, Alexis. Uh, because you are... Well, it's, oh, I did literally just tried to click and drag. Uh, <laughs> you see? Everyone, Everyone uh, wants to click and drag the same. Because we've opened up all these possibilities. Oh, oh. And shortly there'll be things that we can put in here and commit. So just to be super clear on the UI, uh, the top level with the tick means that this uh, particular slot will accept a card with that particular aspect. So that click on the owl that will accept a card that is marked with nictodromy um, I'm particularly a fan of the spooky owl oh. um, but it will not accept what's the one below it will not accept well, anything already that you've already committed, committed yeah. something else and again if, if, you, if you're relatively if, you, if you're a cultist old hand this is, this is all like yeah we know this get on with it the display's a little bit clearer than it used to be if you're uh, uh, new to this whole thing then it's all you but, but the UI will be a lot more helpful about doing all this stuff with you What's this? A slightly different text. Interesting. Intriguing. Um, let's go back to the world. So You've we got... haven't committed anything to the wisdom tree yet. Nice. But we're going to get there. Something for me. It's a thing. It's... Yeah, okay, fine. A note. Interesting. Let's put that back there. Money! Hot and hold. Okay, now I have to say at this stage, um, AK made the immediately bizarre decision to go back to a currency that was <laughs> present in the UK before I was born. Um, before I was born too, thank you very you much. Born, oh, no. Even AK. Um, uh, only, only a year, but still. What's it called? Pence. No, but the whole style of currency. Oh, it's pre-decibel currency. Pre, okay, so it does not even has a name. It's that old. It just has a name defined by what it was before. Um, and I think a lot of Americans have already had a lot of fun. I think yeah. thinking that we made this up ourselves, but it is actually what this country used to run on. Pennies a penny, farthings at quarter penny, hey pennies a hey hey penny, two pennies two pennies, three pennies bit is three pennies, six months six months is six months. Groat that's four pence. We don't talk about groats. Half a crown um, be uh, uh, twenty pence. No, that's a uh, yeah twenty pence. Throwing that's twenty four pence. Two shillings. Uh, a crown, I think. I is, hope you're getting this be down because it's not in the game. Yeah. Uh, guinea. We haven't talked about guineas. A guineas a pound and a shilling. Oh, that's a pet. 
Yeah, it'd also be a pound and a shilling. You can. It's a gold you coin. You can trade a, a guinea. guinea pig for a loaf of bread. No, no, but you, you, you say guinea pigs. We're because, monsters. Because, because well, you, you, no, guinea. You wouldn't trade guinea for a loaf of bread. This guinea was made of gold. Gold bed was made of gold. Bed was made of well, silver. Look, we've got ten shillings. Gold, no gold. one has any idea what that is, but we've got it. It's so money. That sounds good. You liked that quote, didn't you? You said it was, it was fun. I did. I, lo- I particularly love the quote, in her left hand is the lightning, which is to say the telegraph, and in her right, the thunder, which is to say the only telephone in Brown Krug. What it's we- lucky we've got the poles here so the telephone can communicate with the world. See, I'm so unappreciated. <laughs> you really are. You're much better than people think you are. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that's really- so I'm sorry. That's that was the meanest thing anyone's ever I'm said really to sorry. me. I'm really sorry. You're very good at things. Not as good as I ought to be. Yeah. Do you want to go to the pub? Not anymore. That right, I'm dining out on that for years. Look, I put a reference. You're much better. I put a reference to old people think you are. English poetry mm. in this specifically because of my mm. wife, and I know you like that. He stuff. has so much work to do. What's a ring giver, Lottie? Okay, a ring giver. Well, it depends if we're talking about kennings or we're talking about the old English implications. Yes. <laughs> so uh, the short version is um, a ring giver from Anglo-Saxon uh, literature was essentially the Lord. If anyone's ever read or, or watched the Lord of the Rings films or the Hobbit films, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, so everyone loved the ring giver. What it essentially meant was it was somebody in charge who had um, munificence to dole out to other people who were loyal to him. And of course, that's a complicated hierarchy. But really, the, the sort of yen of the stories was that the, the, the king was always good um, and the people who had loyalty or, or were given rings deserved it because they had proven that they were good people too so it wasn't quite as sort of cynical as, as it might seem to modern ears there you go. but sorry back to the ten shilling note so the, the heptarchy um, also it sounds like I made it up when it's some sort of alternate history thing but the heptarchy was um, uh, said so the seven kingdoms in Britain um, in the times um, after the, uh, the the Celts stopped running the show but before the Danes turned up and put Ikea everywhere and, and made Danor and all that, <laughs> all that stuff. Um, they made us eat fish. So what we've got now is access to the kills. They are our friends. Um, and I can actually get assistance from one of them. Normally, you need to pay people to help you. But the very first <laughs> oh, no. people... What? we saw it for Nord oh people, yeah people who play the demo which is available on the Steam page and I would encourage you to play it if you, if you like what you see um, if you come across the phrase for Nord it doesn't mean that the game has exploded what it means is that Alexis hasn't written that text yet um, and so he's going to come back to it if you google the word for Nord you find the reference some of you already know it but but I've, I've got a piece of code that just searches for every for Nord in the game and I'm checking this up to date so I can leave for Nord there as a marker um, Ivan Tolson uh, I, who I used, used to be my landlord in Bangor many many years ago um, used for Nord for a similar purpose in the um, Long Dead TRPG and we were both involved at the time that's, that's but sorry we were saying so we've got access to the kills who will always help us for no money because yeah. they're our old friend and now what I want to do is unlock all these other things so I can get help well uh, uh, yeah uh, these other people um, help from them and this is where it gets a little bit more point and clicky exploratory and there's different routes there's some some uh, starts have a pretty easy time of it some starts have a harder time of it getting up and running with everyone so, for example, Reverend Timothy, I can't get the midwife to introduce, uh, that's not really useful, but Denzel. Oh, uh, she can only introduce you to some people? Yes. So she's not friends with Tim? Uh, What's that beef? Uh, it was not, uh, I think it's probably beef with Terence, actually. I think. Oh, Terence, yeah, that sounds right. Terence I mean, is. is Terence uh, is aware <laughs> that she used to be French, so she's a bit mean about that. Oh, yeah, okay. And, fair. and Terence is, is the, um, uh, the, the guardian here. Uh, if you can fear a very faint rustling, by the way, <laughs> off to our right, that's our, our cat eating a plant. Uh, the the hooligan. So so yeah, there's there's it's it's quite uh, some ways through it easier than others, but there's ultimately a way for every start to unlock um, every approach. Um, secret passion for saffron cake. Turns out saffron cake is actually a a, a, a Cornish delicacy, or used to be for some reason. Uh, Denzel, we love Denzel. We do love Denzel. Sold. So again, uh, I've used Mrs. Gill. You can only use these things once; they disappear. I've got a memory, which might even be useful shortly. And I, I've now got Denzel unlocked, so I can um, hire him to do stuff for me. Uh, <laughs> memory, memory foresight, if you've played it, is the, the echo of every memory hindsight. Um, I love that pairing. I hope you get one in a moment so I can share it. Now, the pub, um, what I can do is I could hire Denzel to help me with the 10 shilling note. It's only in you. 
And I've got Denzel, I've got Sixpence. Yeah, that, that is a placeholder, which I've got around to it yet. Um, and if I wanted to go to the pub, I could put Denzel in. You don't mess with Denzel. So they're not friendly to outsiders at the Sweet Bones, but if you bring Denzel with you, you work it out. Or I could buy the beer. Or some of these options. I don't think there's anything that's useful. No, a couple of stats will allow you to, to like be cheerful or, or determined to pull through. So I wanted to provide a bunch of ways through. And much, much more than in Cultists, this is really key to the design. There are generally different ways to do things in a way they weren't in Cultists, which opened up to get through. Right, so shall I buy beers or put Denzel in? Put Denzel in. No, I can't do that. Should be able to do that. Can't do that. Don't look at that. Don't look at that. I didn't have Okay, them. look at that. Sorted. Fine. By the point, let me just complain about the weather. If you've ever been to Britain, you will have heard people <laughs> complain about the weather. Memory size. Lovely image from, from Cultist. Um, Cromwell, he won't be relevant, will he? <laughs> uh, so, uh, what should I do now, now Lottie Bevan? Well, what so many paths open to me. Can we uh, look to the left at what the mist is covering? Yes, the bridge. So ultimately, I want to get into the library. So this is the, that's if you go left, this is the, the fundamental um, meat of Book of Hours. You are um, The fundamental meat means the meat from the bottom part of the animal. Whatever. It's the meat from the bottom part of the animal. You heard it here first. Um, we are restoring a beautiful crumbling library and essentially a stage that has been built over it's many... It's underground. Yeah, some of it's underground. Um, some of it goes off the art that we currently have in the background, but we don't look at that. Um, but you can't get there yet because it's covered in mist, and the first thing you need to do to get there is to unlock the mist on the Cucurbit Bridge. Why does it say every sod? Bit? I keep meaning to ask you this, but I thought you were being literary. I must have done a find a place or something. Well, this has been in the demo all week. Every so often. Yeah, I love on. that everyone has also assumed the same thing that I have. That, that uh, doesn't make grammatical sense, but we thought that you meant it. No, it's every, <laughs> every so often someone builds bridges to the eye. I think it's supposed to just be. makes you sound really grumpy. <laughs> every so <soft> bridges to <laughs> the eye. Each bridge lasts 100 years or 200. And the sea disposes of it. <laughs> this built in the 1890s is the newest bridge, which doesn't mean it's new. What do I need? I need an assistant. If I only assistant. we had an assistant. And I need Forge. Or lantern or sky. One of the new aspects. Again, not committing to be, be, being principal. Um, the fortunately, forge sounds to me like something relevant to somebody we've already dealt with. We can use up our health to get an hey, action. Hey Denzel. Him, and we can pay the fella. Yes, please. And it'll give He's me, not cheap. He's not cheap, but he's a skilled man. So there we go. You paid half a crown, you got six months. I'm sure you followed that. And, and I combined it to make a shilling. And you combined it to make it six pence plus six pence is twelve pence. Twelve pence to shilling. What else would a shilling be? Literally anything. What's the florin? No idea. Uh, okay. Let's go open the bridge. Oh, we didn't read the letter, did we? No, Let's but we have to open the bridge first. We have to read the letter. The trust congratulates my appointment as librarian of Hush House. The trust assures me that it will provide the promised stipends and funds to the maintenance of the library, but reminds me that it is also limited and suggests I seek local assistance to restoring the premises. Let us know when you're all set up and ready to receive visitors, it, it concludes. It's signed simply the trustees. So here's some things about this. First of all, once you get to a desk, you'll be able to apply to this. The post office is your gateway to the outside world through which you invite people, order books, all that sort of stuff. Secondly, we got some story here. We got some shadowy body called the Trust who are going to give you money. And again, um, the full game, you get an allowance showing up at the post office every so month, every so often, so you don't have to keep on going to the pub and doing uh, fortune telling. I love fortune telling at the pub. There we go, being no again. Oh, placeholder. Fine. <laughs> uh, that's, not, that's actually fixed the demo. This is a different building. Like. So yeah, ultimately I'll get some pocket money uh, from, from the trust. But the other thing is, um, oh, Denzel's gone away. I should have listened to you, Lottie Bevan. So often is the case. Um, no, oh, oh, crikey. Okay, I'm getting overexcited now. Right, start, talk to him, put money in, put money in, two shillings, burning through my reserves. 
Yeah, so I was talking nonsense. A half crown isn't 20 pence, it's 30 pence. You see, no one knows. Every, everyone's going to think I'm an money. idiot. Here we go, let's go unlock the bridge. Let's go unlock the bridge. Right, De Denzel is a blacksmith. So what we can do, we need to do, Hush House has been empty for seven years. Those seven years have rendered the bridge perilous. So a lot of the game, you're going to be unlocking room by room what's going on here. And you almost always, or always need assistance to do it. And you'll need to get better assistance and upgrade or assist or enhance the assistance you have. If I needed Denzel to be better, I could put something in here and exalt him. So if I did this, for example, perhaps we shared a dream. Um, and now Denzel says He's a dream. He's dreamy. dreamy. Which means he's got some moth on him. If I'd used something like metal, um, M-E-T-T-L-E, which you didn't have, I could have increased his forge. But all we need is forge one, and he's already got we can do that. forge two. So we pop him in, and off he goes. <sighs> Again, this will be more exciting in the final build. It will. <laughs> it will, but look, there's, there's... Hush House has been many things have over got, the centuries. Have we, got, have we got... Did you turn the audio down? Uh... No, we should be able to hear some wind on the bridge. Maybe, Maybe it's just the music's louder. Yeah. No. Well, the music's very pretty anyway, I don't care. Right, um, the Keeper's Lodge. And it's almost as far as we can go. Uh, a cottage where Hush House's groundskeeper lives until the fire. If I can get to the place to make it habitable, I can use it as a place for reclaiming more of the house. So again, we need an assistance. Again, we could use Denzel. Or we could use somebody with Knock. Or we could use somebody with Heart. So basically, anybody can get you in. The blacksmith, the rector... Well, our uh, friends can't, the can midwife. they? The kills can't. The midwife. Is she hot? Uh, she is. She is. But let's unlock the um, the rector um, just for variety. Let's go and see. Or well, that's been spending more money. Um, rector Tim. So basically, we're going to pay Denzel to introduce us to the <laughs> local priest. But it's tough living in the 1930s. It's just been a, a great depression. Bit of education for you there. I'll put a link, you can click on it and learn all about history and Wikipedia. That's education, all right? Education is good. We're not going to get Saki. We're going to go and speak to uh, Tim. Oh. You see? You You've can't. embarrassed yourself. I have embarrassed myself. Well, who, 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 that to knock off. Oh, yeah, I've got to bring some, one of these buggers in, haven't I? Um, well, but if I do that, it's afternoon, and I'm going to lose Denzel any minute. It's always night time now. We're not using to unlock the lodge. I'm going to use to unlock the lodge. Ba -da. Ba -da. So again, on the left you see um, quite a large part of the rest of the game. So don't worry about the bizarre purple blocks there for a that we don't talk about. Um, what you what you can we see. We ripped is all the art out of the game because we knew that some of you more excitable souls um, would delve into the unity build and pull out art we wanted to save you from the we didn't want spoilers to spoil yeah um but we can zoom in now and see again art that we will fix later um this is the first room you can unlock in the whole of hush house which is the lodge so we can already see um that it is an atmospheric uh sort of rustic environment and um, it's got a couple of things that you can uh move around some things and it's got your first books which is quite important for a, a book uh, a game that entirely sells itself on being a library couple of things. I mentioned earlier you can, um, it, it hints that um, when you get in here you can make it your base. Uh, beds have functions. They're not weird functions. Not weird, but I mean they could. Uh, they don't. It's, it's role playing. Uh, but they're not this that kind of This is a sweet playing. game. This is a sweet game. Right. Um, when full build, um, what you'll be able to do is get into the lodge um, and use your bed to establish your base here. After which um, the fire will be lit and you'll be able to use it to rest in. At the moment, I think you just rest in it as standard. But the idea ultimately is there are beds in all sorts of different bits. You might decide that you're going to camp out in the infirmary. You might decide you're going to live in the librarian's quarters. You might move downstairs for some reason. And I didn't want you to be able to rest multiple soul elements in multiple beds at the same time because that would be just weird if you're dashing from room to room. Um, but in this way, I hope, will give you the sense that you're exploring this really big, drafty building in which you're alone, and you're forming little oases of firelight so you can um, have that as a basis to, to trek out of the floor. Now, of course, you don't actually have to travel between rooms. One of the things we took out of the game intentionally was a little librarian avatar that bottles around between them, and I'm really glad we did, because ultimately, if you've ever played competitive StarCraft, you know, they say attention is the third resource. Uh, along with Vespine uh, and Minerals. Um, 
panning around is moving, give, giving attention to a particular room is moving, it's going to be quite a challenge by the time you've got all these things open to remember what you put where um, and what yeah. workstations are where. So we didn't want you to have to uh, poddle about between them uh, as well. It also saved us animating the, the, the little devil. And it also allowed you to have a clear idea of what you look like um, without us imposing an avatar on you or having to customise it. Um, so we said the first book in the game. That's not strictly true, but of course there's this fella. That's true, sorry. Oh, but this is, by the way, people have said, it goes dark when you zoom in. Is that a bug? It's not a bug. It's because... Um, the, so it's a badly implemented feature. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, but it, we, we do something like this. The, the, the background art looks nice at a distance, but it's quite low res. Um, and you can't have all the art in the game high res or, or, or the machines fall over. So it just darkens when you go in so you don't look at it but so much. But we were also working on But also working on a better picture approach. So and better art. Yeah. Um, so this is one of the core mechanics in the game. you got your journal. Your journal's um, got some rose aspect. And it's also got a grail mystery. So in order to unlock the journal and understand what's in it, you need to provide... Grail. And if you provide Grail equal to Mystery Grail, then again, this is early UI. Cultist was very sort of alphabet soup like this, uh, but it's hard to see at a glance. You provided Grail equal to or higher than Mystery Grail. It will be easier. Okay, read the book. It took a while because reading a book takes a while. Um, so, what have we got? We've got our journal. Um, again, there'll be a little bit more that happens to the journal once you've unlocked it. Uh, but for now, you fatigue your skill and you've got this um, very charming art. Uh, debauched art. Uh, drawn by a lady, I believe. Drawn by myself, it's true. Uh, and what can I do with this lesson? I could consider it and then... For two seconds? Yeah, that's the that place. It will be longer than that. Not much longer, actually, because I don't... If people have read a book, that's taken 60 seconds plus gubbins. Um, and if they've got a whole bunch of lessons, then I want it to be a moment of realisation. Uh, but it'll probably be a bit longer. This is pretty key. Um, let's fast forward, actually. So what I'm going to do before I show you... Uh, no, I'm going to go to the Wisdom's Tree, and then I'm going to show you something else. Yeah, I miss the Wisdom's Tree. So the Wisdom's Tree, we got our journal in here and we, we can explore the tree and we've now got this so we can either put it in this slot which is the boss wisdom line this slot. There we which go. is the horomacus tree i can't remember is so it horomacus tree let's find out um red the dawn of black the night and white what's left above we see beneath you know red black and white are things which come up a lot in book of hours um what begins in light may end in flesh without distinction of perception pleasure cannot be distinguished from pain these traditions are horror macastry so this is the wisdom tree in in raw game terms what it's saying is you put this fella in this fella you're going to get a metal snap and it's going to be committed to the horror macastry branch and i'm not further down there and um if you put it in the bosque branch then you're going to get Ereb, and it's going to open up stuff down here Without giving too much away, this is not just fluff, these quotes. Um, once we're done, every skill will have at least two, possibly four, different descriptions depending on where you push it in the tree. And all this stuff is um, helps you understand what Horomachus tree and Bosque and whatnot are, but also they're clues towards things that happen later in the game. Occasionally I will just drink too much Lambig, um, and go on a tear but almost every phrase in the game is not entirely self-indulgent all of it is clues all of it's connects you remember that spreadsheet you saw me sitting in front of the other day yeah ah, every single one of these freaking descriptions at the beginning all, all um, 18 of them just for the starting stuff connects to one of the potential game endings or sub endings it connects to the skill it connects to the wisdom and it's got to connect some of the backstory of hush house as well so packing all this is is often a little bit like playing freaking tetris with the pen um but um who are you going to commit then bosk or horror what do you think i think um horror macastry because we've already got a bosky journal so let's uh diversify da, 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 da. Da, da, da. 
so I wonder if we can put a blinder here. Uh, first of all, what I'm going to do for reasons that become apparent momentarily is I am going to um, get um, some help from we don't need Mrs. them. Kill. There we go. You can use these people's assistance, but you can also just talk to them. Some of this is newish. Uh, if I talk to her, I will get a random memory. <laughs> um, this is this is not there wildly is. this is not wildly sexist. You can't be noticed. Uh, no, it's really not actually. Yeah, you can get gossip from Reverend Timothy just as easy. You get I think in her job, she'd probably hear quite a lot of in her job tales. she would. But also, you, you you do get different likelihoods of different memories from different uh, villagers. Denzel is more likely to talk about um, uh, regret. Uh, Mr. Kill is more likely to talk about, um, uh, I think, hindsight, and she's got travellers' tales to tell. But memory gossip, uh, I'm delighted to say, that is a memory which has got some grail as well as some rose. So let's say I want to increase my desires and dissolutions. I can put these lessons in. Lessons are things you get from books. When you study a book to learn a skill, you get some lessons towards a skill. But actually, and this may not be in the current demo build, you don't need to put a lesson for the skill in here. You can put in here any memory with appropriate aspects. So I could do that. The idea being that rather than restricting you to very specific um, ingredients that go into a recipe, we want you to be able to progress in the game based on kind of thematically relevant things. So. Lessons, desire, and dissolutions is 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 sort of akin to hearing maybe some salacious gossip. So it can't level you up immediately because that is not enough in and of itself to increase your skill level. But it would help, right? Because you're doing the sort of thing that is sort of relevant to the skill if and, you don't have the lesson. And exactly, and there's more. Um, memories are very easy to get hold. Get uh, lessons are much harder to get. So you, you you can build by the time you want to get your skill up to eight, you've got eight of these slots, seven of these slots, eight of these slots, nine of these slots, and that's hard to fill. But if you can bulk them out with um, other memories, um, foresight for forge-based skills or, or Grail for uh, grady sort of skills, um, then you can push yourself over the limit and learn stuff. And you could even use lessons from adjacent skills. Um, maybe I've learned a desires and dissolution lesson. Um, and I want to use it for another skill that's got some grail focus. So knowledge translates, right? If you know a little bit of physics, that also helps a little bit with maths or chemistry. And so here. Anyway, let's level the, 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 the lady up. I think we should level up. I think we should end the demo. And then I think we should talk to people. Because we're coming up to I the agree. hour and a half. There's a couple of things I want to show, but I'll show them quickly. So... <laughs> That's two. Leveled up. That's Skill not the final two. text. <laughs> not, the final, <laughs> not the final text, and we, we, we might get some marks on the card to show it's, it's, it's leveled up, even if it just says desires and dissolutions too. Um, last thing, last two things I want to do in the demo, in the stream, for whatever this thing is, game. Um, a broadcast. A broadcast, that's the fellow. The Giminiad, you say? I thought it was the Geminiad. Uh, Geminiad, Giminiad, Geminiad. I'd probably say Giminiad, but I'd probably say something different on a different day. So we've got a bunch of, of uh, sample books in here. The fourth volume <gasps> of The Locksmith's Dream. A few copies survive. Um, let's look at this. So studying books is one of the core mechanics in the game. And um, again, I need four Sky if I'm going to understand this book. What have I got that's Sky? No Sky there. No sky there, no sky there, nothing there, nothing there. Okay, so I actually can't do this one. I thought I had to do one point <laughs> of sky. Let's do the, the Gimaniad as the same um, uh, thing. But it needs grail. Uh, it needs grail. So what I can do is put in some Ereb. Got some grail. And, oh no, it's heart, fine. Uh, health. Because there's three volumes of the uh, Gimaniad and book about it. it's not just one one thing you provided heart but not enough to match mystery heart if you're lucky you might still succeed so i need 10 i've only got one 
because Ice and Dissolutions doesn't have any heart, but I could put a skill in there. I could also put a memory in here. Um, and I'm going to cheat. Don't look what I'm doing. This is this is Naughty Town. Um, teaching them the ways. Fine. Let's have a Solus memory. So I could pop this in here, and that gives me a little bit of, of heart. Still not enough, but enough to give me a bit more charts. So what I can do is try anyway. If you're lucky, you might still succeed. And this is, again, the fundamental difference between Cultus Simulator and uh, Book of Hours. In Cultus Simulator, if you try to do something you weren't suited, that you weren't superbly well suited for, you probably fail, and you might fail anyway. In Book of Hours, you can always try, and you might get lucky. I've got these things. Um, popping up, uh, which are opportunities for something to work out and maybe to be able to salvage a situation. So I could put in, for example, um, another memory because it's randomly decided I've got an opportunity for memory. And I've now got three hearts, still not enough, but I've got a couple of opportunities left after this. What more can there be? Wall art. <laughs> right, if I happen to have a useful painting in this room, um, I could look at it, drag it into here. Um, and increase my heart. But and I this is because you wanted um, the recipes to be uh, affected by the place that you do mm -hmm. the recipes in. In Cultist, all of the game took place in one place, which was essentially a sort of um, slightly unclear tabletop where things happened and it was, all, it was all there. Whereas here, we want it to matter whether or not you do a spell or you read a book in the lodge or whether you read it in the highly um, kitted out uh, reading room, which has loads of um, useful wall art and loads of useful uh, like like furniture that have certain aspects that will help you succeed in a recipe. So it so, gets a so bit more got, strategic. So it gets more strategic and you can customise places. And again, I hope the, the, the feel, the customization will fit with the actual game mechanics. So if you, you, you want to kit out the, the church um, of the abbey um, up here, it's likely to be very lantern-y, it's easy to make it lantern -y and you can do your lantern reading up there. Um, if you want to um, uh, do things with bale, with, with bell, like this winter or moon, we go to the night gallery and put all sorts of horrible things in there to help with that. But there's a random element as well, because in the early design, it's educational. Um, uh, in the early design, you basically, everything that was in a room counted into the recipe. And that meant we realized that what you wanted was, you got all the chairs that had sky on, and you put all the chairs in the ballroom. We did realize it was basically culture simulator, but with chairs, yeah. which is not quite the mood we were going for. So now it's more random and less mini max, and you basically customize things to feel right. And also, sometimes we're just nice to you. Um, epiphany. So one of the um, opportunities, it turns out, is Epiphany. And you've got a mood which just increases certain aspects. That is nice. Uh, it's not enough. It's not the right aspect. Happens. No, it's not the right aspect, it's not enough. But sometimes it will just say, you know what, you're getting a bit of a bonus. Um, That's yeah. nice. Uh, so it's fatigued some stuff and some stuff's been used up. There's hindsight, the opposite of foresight. Um, so we didn't succeed, but we did learn a little thing with the memory hindsight. So again, the, the whole vibe of Cultist was time is your enemy, here time is your friend. The whole vibe of Cultist is um, you might fail. The whole vibe of Book of Hours is you might succeed. Well, look, I think that's quite a nice place to conclude. Now dusk is falling. I We've put our idea. sexy hip. Shall we give them a preview of the room art? What? Oh yeah. What? Oh yeah. Yeah, so we made a special build for this stream that you can't actually access on the normal demo branch, although the demo that you can get is almost exactly the same. Um, but I believe AK put back in some room art that he shouldn't have. Uh, and now he's going to make an engineer come and make it. I am. So. Uh, oh, she hasn't got knock. Of course she hasn't got knock. You, you know the what? None. I could have freaking debug it. Yeah. Oh yeah. <gasps> the entrance hall. Yeah. Hush House, it was a monastery. Uh, before that, it was something else. Uh, after it was a monastery, it was a very old castle. Then the Courier of the Isle moved in and made a sort of scholarly society. Um, and oh, by the way, I should give props to Adrian Degan, uh, the room art artist, for having, having done this. Um, you, you might, if you're British or French, you might look at this and sort of register subtly. This looks a little bit more French like a French farmhouse and just like an English farmhouse for reasons it's hard to put your finger on. Some of the, 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 the tools and some of the things in here, which I like because Cornwall is just across the sea and like I say, it shares a lot of culture with Brittany. Anyway, uh, this is where it used to be under the gatehouse where um, 
uh, work with people, get boiling oil poured at them. Now you put your umbrella here. <laughs> What's this? The cloisters? The watchman's tower? An observatory? I can't be stopped. Yes, I can. Okay. <laughs> that chair? <laughs> Big chair? Kitty's armchair. Yes, that's Kitty Mezzarine, uh, second librarian of Hush House. I think we should end by saying Kitty Mezzarine, second librarian of Hush House. Well, I thought we could talk um, to the chat for a bit. And, and the, the thing. Yeah, let's talk to the chat. Okay, but yeah, so that's Book of Hours in a nutshell. If you play the demo, you'll be able to get to the lodge. Um, and once you've unlocked the lodge, the demo will end. You can't mm -hmm. access the rest of the um, library because you don't want to spoiler you. But in the final game, obviously, mm -hmm. um, the library is your oyster. And you have all of this to unlock and master. Ooh, do you just want to click the stack on the sundries uh, tray? Um, a what? Uh, there we go. Just so you know, you don't need to understand pre-decimalised British uh, currency. This button will do it for you. Yes, so it'll, it'll stack it up. Right, well, let's see if anyone is still here, if we've been talking into the uh, the total win. Okay, right, some people are here. Giant chair, big chair, we love it. Um, I hope that you have enjoyed seeing AK play and sometimes ruin um, the demo. Certainly ruin some of my art. But I'm now sorry. is a good time to ask any questions if you have... Will, will there still be some survival elements like in Cultist Sim? So um, I think that's worth answering because I've talked before about heart games and winter games. Cultist Simulator oh, yeah. is very much a winter game. Uh, Book you. of Hours is very much a heart game. I love survival games. Um, uh, uh, I love playing RimWorld Ridiculous Difficulty and, and stupid mods in, in Fallout 4. Uh, not everyone does. Book of Hours is really freaking gentle. Yeah. It is very hard to get things that spiral out of control to kill you. It is possible. One of the other mechanics that isn't in the game yet is maladies. If you use abilities and you fail, you can get your abilities, uh, elements of the soul, where you get them flipped. Um, so this is the, the, our equivalent to fascination and dread and cultist. Um, if you, you get your Arab flipped, it can end up being the opposite aspects. You can still use it, uh, but but if you but it can flip more of your Arab into, into similar sort of mm. deranged melody aspects. Western Grire and Echolalia and Cathreptasy. Uh, it sounds like I'm just, just talking nonsense and these are actual words. Uh, and fascination is what happens if your Fost gets out of control. Uh, and that can be a game ending thing if you let that get too uh, far out of control, but it's quite, quite kind. I would love to put basically a survival version here for the Lulies where the infections and the theoplasmic mm. assaults and whatnot can get out of control and fuck your shit up. <laughs> uh, uh, that'll probably be a post-launch thing, but, you know. Thanks for us brought up on old money. Crikey, uh, I salute you, uh, uh, being person, a senior vintage by me, but I spoil years. The clouds on sticks. The thing about the clouds on sticks, they were really pretty. Firstly, thank you, Mr. Octagon 9, with the clouds on sticks. Yeah, they were lovely, but um, uh, if you, the, the sticks got in your way, so you felt like you were trying to click past them, so it was an easy yeah, to they, them out. Yeah, so they, they are really sweet, but they just didn't work in terms of how the layout of the map actually works, which is there's lots of places to um, to click on, so we didn't want to get in the way. So we have moved to this more uh, misty effect, but maybe the, the cocktail clouds will come back in some version. Um, so we've got questions about the origins impacting gameplay. I just want to remember, because it's a good follow-on for the previous one, what spot with the Switch was sometimes a frankly sadistic approach <laughs> to a supportive one. Two reasons. Um, creative and commercial and honestly the creative one game first the commercial one is just that there are lots of people who said I, I can see I'd really like Cultist Simulator but it kills me every time I do something wrong so I'm going to leave a Steam review of saying that and, and there we go you know, we've got it perfectly encapsulated by Altotos exactly. Cultist Simulator intimidated me a lot this one looks a lot more accessible that is exactly what we're trying to do we're uh, taking everything that people loved about Cultist and what we're trying to do is repackage it in a way that some people will like better. Some people will just think it's not difficult enough for me. I want to play New Game Plus or Cultist Simulator because they hate themselves. But lots of other people will think I really wanted to love Cultist and I ended up hating it because it, I sort of felt like something fun was taken away from me because I couldn't just I couldn't get on board with it. And hopefully, Book of Hours for those people will be a godsend. And uh, uh, yeah, again, that's the, the commercial thing. But creatively, honestly, I, I made Cultist, which is a mean game, and I made Son of Sea, which is also quite a cruel game. And I just wanted to do something nice. <laughs> For a change and a bit more tranquil, uh, I, I spoke to a, quite a cross gentleman on Steam the other day who didn't like the turn it was taking and wanted more eldritch horror and meanness. He was polite um, uh, uh, about it, but he was obviously quite upset. And I just wanted to do something different. Um, I mean, there's still some grim bits in 
in Book of Hours, but he's just less grim. I mean, it's still it's still sort of a Lexus Kennedy. So the way I, I don't know how you feel about Lovecraftian Hooger, but but there is there we're trying to do something which is you know a bit gothic, a bit spooky, a bit frightening but not stressful. I think that's the key thing. I don't want people to feel stressed from playing this game. So I think I think one of the... If, if there's any Danes in the chat, they'll tell me I'm mispronouncing it, but you guys screwed up the heptarchy, so, so <laughs> it's a deal. Uh, the Hugo, uh, this idea of, of cosiness and warm jumpers and, and warm fires, I understand that the original concept it has got two sides because for warm jumpers and fires to work, there's got to be cold and darkness. The idea of Hugo is, is this island in, in darkness. So I really wanted um, for you to feel that you are somewhere safe, but if you go outside, it's a bit more, more mm. threatening. Mm. Walls at the door. Love crafting Hugo's my new life motto. Yeah. What's the other one you want to uh, answer? Um, somebody asked um, how much the origins would have an impact on gameplay. TBD. Significant, but not overwhelming. So what you are not going to find is every is, is you get lines of dialogue that constantly echo it. Mostly it determines your sort of initial trajectory and makes certain things easier. And there is at least one unique ending for each um, origin. So one of the things a lot of my games have done over the years is rather than having a sort of direct branching thing where if you make choice A, it says, oh, you took choice A, took choice A, took choice A. You make choice A, that means that you've got more cheese, and that generally sort of opens the cheese-oriented parts of the game. Or cheese is the Thank devil's God. milk. Cheese is the devil's milk, so it's not going to happen. Um, so, um, uh, the but 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 you take the point. So generally, I think it'll set a trajectory. And again, I like sort of apophenic stuff, where the fact that you are coming to something as the artist or the magnate or the twice born or the cartographer means that you have decided to role play that approach or role play a different approach so you think differently about things a certain amount of the game happens in your head but that it, it really depends on what ideas i have and how carried away i get the thing about having nine origins is Lottie and I talk about the terror of multiplication. Mm. As soon as you say, you just need to write nine things. That sounds like easy. It sounds easy. You write nine things. It's not that measurement of the five things. Lazy death. But you think you need to multiply the amount of work by almost ten. Mm. It really gets out of control. Mm. So... Well, the art version of that is there is a room you can unlock quite late on in the game. Um, you can actually start um, excavating caverns beneath Hush House. And one of the first rooms that I drew was one of these chambers which has this ancient... Um, uh, statue and, and kind of uh, ritualistic objects inside it and it's very exciting and to make this look beautiful we're actually on screen right now which you can't see because you can't see what I see but anyway on the Steam page there's a screenshot of this she's seeing things which is uh, a, a beautiful kind of chamber covered in lots of candles because I wanted it to just look really spooky and occult and, and kind of ritualistic and I said blithely well we can just let them move every candle in the room and sure there's lots of candles in that room but you know it's important to the vibe of that room what we're trying to get across and AK was like do the maths and we have something like 88 yeah. rooms in game and every room has probably somewhere between two and a hundred candles in it so if we were going to facilitate the movement of mm. candles on an individual basis we're looking at just like and firstly it would be awful it would be candle simulator which i don't think yeah. anyone wants people complain about rsi after cultist yeah we don't want to do that anyway so so maths is your enemy in game design uh, I saw somebody else asking, uh, uh, "What about the other libraries? Are they lost? Are they going back in?" So, oh, so I, yeah. um, it was never in the design that you would be able to manage nine different libraries because, because basically, what Lottie's, Lottie's talking about is the same work. We might do DLC when you're managing, managing a different library; that'd be fun. The other eight libraries um, are still referenced in the game. You would like to meet people from them. You would like to swap books with them. Um, there are nine libraries in the world. Um, uh, associated with something called the Watchman's Tree, um, uh, which is impossible to talk about that massive spoiler. <laughs> I can tell uh, you, were like, I regret mentioning yeah. this. Uh, but, but I have mentioned <laughs> the Watchman's Tree before. Okay. Um, so, which again ties back to all English poetry. Oh, as in the Covenant of the Rude. Love the Rude. Yeah. The dream of the Rude. Uh, Right, well, look, we're talking about Anglo-Saxon poetry and we're eating yeah. crisps, so I think we should end it here before you spoil anybody Let else. Let me just, just scroll through and see if there's any... Um, um, uh, it's Maribeth Filey, you are frustrating British people. Hey, <laughs> Abed! Thank you for doing the music. We were nice about you earlier in the stream if you go back and, and, and take a look at it. Um, I wanted to say, because I didn't say over email, um, I didn't realise how much difference the um, .wav files would make over the MP3s because um, the... Uh, I, I could hear stuff I couldn't hear in the originals, which is why I thought you'd done more remixing. Uh, uh, 
you would saw there, a question. Would there be support for multiple legacies by her side, the librarian, or all those origins now? Very straightforward, their origins. There might be different legacies in different uh, DLCs and things, but basically blur. Um, <laughs> basically uh, blur. Long chair. Big chair. We, we were talking about all the chairs. Look, we're going to end it here. Now we'll look at the more, more things. No, because it... Wait, I'm doing spells. You can't... <laughs> <laughs> You're a wizard, Harry. Uh, the, uh, the thing we didn't talk about at all is the crafting thing. So basically the sort of mechanics I showed you for reading books. Um, crafting works like that, but more so. I think people will... A certain subset of people will absolutely lose their shit over the crafting in, in, in this. He did say that halfway through today when he got very excited about his design breakthrough. Yeah. But look, thank you so much for watching um, us play through the demo. Uh, I hope that you like what you saw. Obviously, it's a tiny slice of the game and it's five months from launch, so it will look probably quite different by the time it gets to launch. Hopefully more polished, hopefully less UI grumbles. Um, if you have any further questions, put them in the forum in Steam. Um, we check them regularly and there's lots of kind of cultist aficionados who have some very good uh, theories you may be able to answer on our behalf. Um, and if you have no idea what we're talking about but you don't hate it, I recommend that you download the demo, which will be available till the end of Next Fest, possibly a bit longer, um, but we're not quite sure. Um, and give it a go yourself. Shall we, shall we do any shilling? Is it worth doing shilling? We should say I think we just shilled game, enough. Yeah. yeah, obviously, if you want to help us out, wish us the game. It's incredibly beneficial. Lottie's drawing. Uh, in, in, you know, she, she pretends she doesn't work at weekends, but she does. At weekends, she draws the Lucid Tarot, which is um, still likely to be the first translucent PVC stained glass style tarot deck. Well, and it's finding universe. its way in secretly into Book of Hours. It is. So part part of it the is. fun in two tests, places in, in multiple places actually. Um, yeah, so you'll be able to see some of that in game. But but yeah, we'll talk about that on a different time. Thanks so much for coming to see us. I can't believe how many people watched us. I That's hope we entertained you. Exactly right. um, Thank you've you, totally everyone. made our week. Uh, hope you like the game and we'll speak to you again soon. Uh, Lambig's really nice, by the way. I recommend it. Thank you, the Bretons. Have a lovely evening for now. <laughs>